Welcome to the Friday Power Lunch, a weekly show amplifying the voices of the Virginia grassroots. Each week, we provide engaging conversations about politics, culture, and women making change. Produced by the unstoppable women of Network Nova, our motto is, when we vote, we win. The Friday Power Lunch is recorded before a live Zoom audience. Follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and show us some love and become a sponsor through Patreon. The Friday Power Lunch, badass women getting things done. So we're so glad to get started and get down to business. I'm Catherine White, your host of the weekly Friday Power Lunch, the show bringing you the guests, the issues, the action, all in one big room. And yes, we amplify the voice of the grassroots to get things done and to make politics fun. That's what we love to do. It is July 22nd and welcome to the Friday Power Lunch. I am so excited to bring up our guest today to get things started because we are mobilizing for the midterms. And as one of the guests said today in the back room, you won't you won't be able to shut us up. And that's the kind of guest we like. So this is awesome. I am so excited to bring up Isabel Braun, founding member of Red to Blue, along with Craig uh, Seligman, Red to Blue. Hello, how are you all doing? We're good. Coming from Brooklyn, Isabel, you're on mute. So Craig, you're over there in Brooklyn. Did you wake up and get a good bagel today or what's the what's the read? Um, I didn't go out of the house today. It is hot here. <laughs> Getting steamed up. Well, Isabel, I'm so glad to see you. How, how are you doing today? Very well, thank you. Can you hear me? Oh, you hear you loud and clear. Well, we're so excited to have Red to Blue on to find out really, again, to put different groups that are really mobilizing to win. So we look forward to speaking to you later. Thank you for being here. So glad to see you all. And next up, Ronnie Cohen, co-founder and executive of Activate America. Ronnie. Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm, uh, I'm calling in from Berkeley. So it's really more of a power breakfast than a power <laughs> lunch out here. But it's great to be here. And I'm really excited to talk to you all about, uh, about our programming. Yeah, we're excited to have you because uh, when we talked before, our stories really align and it's so great to see people doing the long game and what that looks like for all of us activists. So thank you, Ronnie, for being here. And lastly, we have Nick Knudsen here, but he's not here yet. He is also on Cal is actually West Coast time, but he'll be with us later. Um, so we'll, we look forward to hearing, he is the executive director of DEMCAST. So we, we look forward to bringing Nick up to talk about what they're doing to mobilize, mobilize the grassroots activists. So again, let's get things started. So glad to see everybody in the room. Um, some of you have your backgrounds on, which is awesome. I may turn mine off in a little bit. I am broadcasting from South Carolina. So um, I don't know how well my signal will hold up, but we hope it will. So rules of the road today. We love to have fun, use the chat to communicate, communicate, tell us where you're at. And also if you get nasty or out of line, you know, Stair loves to, to, bump, to uh, bump people out. So keep it fun and right, we do have bouncers over here. Keep it fun and just make sure you're always just keeping the chat moving. And then after chat, 1 p.m., we love to go to the after chat. That's always fun. We hope you'll stick around. That's our favorite part of the show. And lastly, if you love the show, you like what we bring us, be a Patreon, support the show for a few bucks, the cost of a cup of coffee, you can support our show. So we, we love to feel that love and it really helps us get our work done. So thank you for all you patrons in the room. Awesome. All right. So I want to get started with my favorite part of the show with our show messenger, Fennell Norton, because we always have something to talk about. So let's talk about the January 6th. 187 minutes later. What do you yeah. think? Yes. Can you hear me okay? Good. Perfect. Yeah, I hear you fine. Loud and clear. Wonderful. I want to hear, uh, listen, the 80, 187 minutes. And so that's what I love. It's going to be my new song or something. But <laughs> I loved last night. And I think maybe that's why I feel so good and optimistic today is because I think that that message really got through. We saw every single minute of what was happening. And quite frankly, it was horrifying. 
Sure. And so, uh, so I'm going to have a different message for folks who still say after watching those 187 minutes that they are still supportive of the president or anyone who's hanging on to his coattails. So what do you think? Yeah, I mean, uh, what I was really proud of is seeing our Congresswoman Elaine Luria um, being part of those proceedings. And it made me, uh, you know, today when I was talking about her, how important it is to hold that seat. It, unfortunately, redistricting has made that district so hard for us, but we shouldn't give up. We have to do everything we can. I mean, they actually, for those in the room that know this, they actually took her out of her own district when they did the redistricting in, in Virginia, and they made it extra hard for her. So we are going to really have to fight for that seat because um, those are three important seats in Virginia we have to keep. So that made me proud to think about that. But um, yeah, it's crazy, crazy. Yeah. Secret Service stuff. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What an so, idiot he is. I mean, how he couldn't record himself and talk correctly. I mean, this is this is where we're at, right? So I'll, I'll tell you two things. So one, I feel very optimistic about uh, Congresswoman Elaine Loria. And here's why. Uh, if anybody hasn't seen her ad, maybe you can Google it. Because to me, the ad that she has on TV right now if one isn't inspired about her message there in terms of how important taking the oath is, and they really hammered on that last night, how important right. the oath is that the president takes and how he was derelict in his responsibilities in terms of what he did. So I think that's good. I think the Secret Service messaging was important last night because that demonstrates how serious this entire thing was. And I just think that any American who can't look at what Elaine Luria and the others are talking about, and then you still turn your back on the Constitution, the country, and democracy, I, I think that there is more of us than them, and I think that they will show themselves in this election. Yeah, and I think the most important thing with accountability is that we know now the Secret Service could have been part of this. Uh, that we know there's a lot of infiltration uh, with the Oath Keepers. You have a lot of problems that this will not go away and it will happen again. We need accountability for our democracy to survive. And the one thing we can do is really make sure, this is why this conversation is so important today, how we're mobilizing people, first of all, with the knowledge, how important this, how serious it is, but to make sure we mobilize everybody, you know, so... Um, yeah. One thing I want to talk about that is what we always like to talk about messaging, um, messaging, and it's so important and, and what we're doing in so many different ways. It talk, let's talk about the billboards, what I think we have to do it in every way. And let's talk about what the Royal Ground Game is doing, if you want to set that up. Yeah, I would love to. So uh, everybody who knows me knows that I am passionate about billboards because I think that depending on the communities that you live in, and quite frankly, they're good in urban areas too depending on the community that you live in, people will get messages all kinds of ways. And so when you think about, to me, this January 6th hearings, there is probably really important messaging that's gonna be good there, whether you put it on a cab, at a bus stop, or wherever you put this out of home messaging. Knocking doors is still the number one thing, and phone banking too, but at the end of the day, you have to start to think about, people aren't opening the doors quite as often. So billboards will be, often, will be awesome for that. Yeah. So. Yeah, and we're gonna do, are we gonna talk about that later when we do or do the tweet out? Robin, what's the, what's our- Well, let's start by talking about how people can be involved in it by donating to the campaign. Yeah. Yes, but there'll be an Act Blue link that you guys will be able to go to because we are looking in CD2, there may be others, but we're looking in Loria's district because we really wanna support her. And so the Eastern Shore is one of her big areas. There are other areas that are really big too and important. And billboards will be a way for us to get the messaging out and keep it consistent. So she's got a whole national presence last night, but we can start right here impacting her campaign by donating for billboards for Loria. Yeah. I, okay, I just donated. Let's see how many people can donate during the show. Right now it says 150 have been raised. Let's see how much we can raise. Let's talk about it first. Let's talk about it again. So what these are going to be billboards down there for CD. I, I want you to stay on. You took yourself off. Um, so come back, Robin. Uh, what we're going to do is there a new way to message down there and it worked for your campaign, right? Yeah, yeah. It, really, yeah it really did. You'd be surprised at the number of people, even after the campaign was over, who'd say, Oh, I saw you. Oh, right. I, the billboard was great. Or I came in because I saw your billboard. So they matter. Statistics yes. even bear it out now. No, no, it, it really does. And so I am, um, 
so what I'm trying to say is like, if we're going to do these billboards and people have to know the messaging matters right down there. Um, and then you'll be able to see these in her district and they're going to be all about not her, but the values we're promoting. So what we need is people to donate to this and tell more about it, Robin, how that's going to work. And well, we have, we have the act blue link in the, um, right there. Can you not hear me, Catherine? Mm -hmm. We can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. We have the act blue link there. So just sign up and the money is going to go to the rural ground game that is coordinating these billboards because sometimes campaigns don't um, don't have the resources to put up billboards so we so the with the rural ground game and with messaging assistance from people like Fennell, we're right. getting those billboards up and they are going to be layered so what's going to be on the billboard is going to be complemented by postcards and radio ads and yard signs so we're not just doing one we're going to layer it so everywhere they go they're going to hear the same message yeah that sounds good and i want to say something happy birthday to robin that's why i wanted you to come on today is robin's <laughs> birthday happy birthday robin and i know you're what 23 23 okay that means we're over 55 when we say that but <laughs> i want to wish you a great birthday this is so exciting it's friday too so i hope you have fun so let's put, wish Robin a happy birthday in the chat. And that's why I wanted you to come back on. Oh, you're, okay. hard, you're hard, you're hard to, you know, to boss around. So yeah, so thank you for that. We'll we'll follow up with Nick when he comes on for Demcast because we're going to tweet about those billboards and make sure that people understand how they can contribute because we need to get those up. All righty. So let's get this party started and let's go out of the gate. Fennell, you're going to be up with Red to Blue with Isabel and Craig, and we're really excited to hear about this great group doing this fabulous mobilizing for the midterms. I'll let you go. Okay. Here they are. Good morning, Isabel. Good morning, Craig. I guess it's afternoon now. I'm so excited to get to talk to you guys. So I want to just take a second, and I want you to just tell folks what Red to Blue is, but don't give it all away. So sort of tell a little bit about how you started because then I want to get to the two word description of how you would describe who you are now. Happy to do that. We started uh, as many groups did after 2016. We wanted to focus on state level races. We wanted to be as a New York is blue. So we wanted to go someplace that needed us. And we went to Virginia and we've been in Virginia 2017, 2019. 2021 and then the even years we've been in Pennsylvania we offer a full suite of services we offer uh, texting postcarding we offer canvassing social media phone calling um, did I say texting and so uh, so creative services and we have been aligned with specific candidates and in mm. 2022 we have pivoted offering our services now through partners on the ground okay and so when i ask you guys how you would describe who you are today craig you said two words what are they oh i don't even remember <laughs> I, I, um I, I think uh, it was in reference to the uh, New Pennsylvania project. Uh, uh, what are my two words for now? The Abrams. Oh, Stacey Abrams, that's right. That's, uh, <laughs> Stacey, Stacey Abrams has been our inspiration this year. Uh, and um, yeah, she changed the comp uh, really the direction of what we've been doing last year um, in Pennsylvania and uh, last year in Virginia, we did a lot of phone banking and didn't really feel that what we had been doing had been as effective as we would have liked. So we tried to figure out how to pivot this year to partner with an organization on the ground in Pennsylvania. And what we came up with was uh, the New Pennsylvania Project, which is modeled on and inspired by Stacey Abrams' New Georgia Project. They're out there uh, every day, every week, registering new voters 
and we are, uh, as Isabel likes to put it, their back office. Okay, so what does that look like? So we've pivoted, so you guys still do all of the things you did before. So a candidate could still get all of those services, but now you do something even bigger. And when you think about voter registration, it goes far beyond that. So let's talk about that. What are you guys doing? What is this back office thing? Uh, uh, just to clarify, our canvassers are partnered with Indivisible Philly. Our mm -hmm. texters are uh, partnered with Turn PA Blue. It is a brand new data team and our callers who are partnered with the New Pennsylvania Project. And what it means is we try to do uh, our actions based on research. So research indicates the most effective outreach is neighbor to neighbor relational organizing. Mm -hmm. We are in, many of us are in New York, but we're across the country. And so how to be effective. And that means that in state, the New Pennsylvania Project staff and volunteers registers new voters. They have a C3 arm, a C4 arm. We're al aligned with the C4 arm. They are going to new citizen ceremonies, communities of color, communities of uh, uh, normally of immigrants, uh, colleges, high schools, and they register voters. They take a picture of that or scan that voter registration form, and then that comes to us. And then it begins, Craig. And then it begins. And so what begins, Craig? Um, this began as a very small project uh, when they uh, told us that they were uh, having, a, they were a little backed up in registering all this new information in spreadsheets. I very innocently said, oh, we can help out with that. Uh, this has ballooned into a huge project. Uh, they are out in many counties in Pennsylvania registering voters. They scan the registration forms, and then we now have an army of data entry people who look at those forms and enter them into spreadsheets. Uh, the spreadsheets uh, then become the basis of lists of people for our phone bankers to call because what we know from um, research is that one out of three people you register actually goes to the polls. So what we're doing is phoning people saying, hey, um, we, uh, we're the new Pennsylvania project. We registered you a month ago. We wanna make sure that you got your voter registration card, that everything's going well. Um, have, have you received the card? Um, or have you had problems registering? And Isabel, who's been on many of these calls, can tell you um, they've been very different from the phone banking we've done in the past. Yeah. yeah, that's important because I think what you guys discovered is that everybody doesn't like every kind of phone banking, right? So you guys have found work for folks who wouldn't ordinarily be making phone calls. So can we talk about how important it is for you guys to put people in the right spaces? We're, we're totally volunteer, we're all grassroots, and our volunteers were saying, my head is bloodied from hitting it against the wall. So basically, I would say that we really now have more volunteer phone bankers than we have numbers to call, which I think anybody here who's worked on phone banks will say <laughs> they've never heard of that. <laughs> and I would say our numbers are fresh. These are fresh phone numbers. So we don't have that same uh, disconnect. The rate of contact is much higher. But the most exciting thing is that you are able to say, we registered you. And they go, oh, yeah, yeah. And we want you to vote. Uh, to be clear, you do not need your voter registration card to vote in Pennsylvania, but there's been so much voter suppression that depending upon the individual uh, county, it, if you have the card, it, it, it's, it's reassuring and you're more likely not to have a problem. So, 
and we have great conversations. We use our own phones. If we were not doing this, it would take two to three months to get these numbers into, uh, into any way that other people could call. So, and by then it gets later and later. Here, everybody who has not received their voter registration card, who is confused, can we help them check their status and they have time to fix it. It's very rewarding. Yes, and so if you get someone and you sort of feel like they're a Democrat or that they are sort of rolling your way or have a good conversation, your callers will have that conversation. Is that right? Absolutely. We have a conversation with anybody who's been registered as a Democrat or unaffiliated. Very we good. All Republicans. And a lot of people uh, registering for the first time, uh, we, there's a whole spectrum of voters. Some uh, new voters are extremely unsophisticated about parties, so they register as unaffiliated because they, hard it is, as it is for us to believe, don't understand the difference between Democrats and Republicans. So if you tell people uh, Obama is a Democrat and Trump is Republican, that really helps them understand the difference between parties and uh, and decide their votes. And we know because of the communities that NPP is going into, these are mostly populations that will vote the way that we want them to in any case, as Stacey Abrams found out in Georgia. So, so I have a, so, so my, my next question is this, working with the new Pennsylvania project, they have goals that they want to, in terms of registering new voters. Can we talk about how you guys play a role in that? Sure. Um, they have uh, a hefty goal of getting 35,000 new voters, uh, by, I think, uh, th this cycle. They are one year old. For the first six months, they had one employee. So they are, uh, expanding like crazy. And they have registered 13,000 so far. So uh, even though we have more than enough data enterers and phone bankers right now, we hope that it explodes in about a month because the, the being overwhelmed means that they have registered more and more people. I want to add that they're seeking 35,000 new voters out of the 1.7 unregistered voters in Pennsylvania. There's really a huge pool of voters to register. So the, the faster they can grow, uh, the faster we can enter data, the more voters we can get to the polls. So one of the other pieces that was really important, Isabel, and you can say whatever you're about to say, is that you guys, as you were thinking through this, you were thinking, how can we do work and not be there? So you wanted to, to say, doesn't matter where we sit, we can still support, um, we can still support organizations. So can we talk about that too? Sure. I, I think that what's clear is um, that the Democrats have been losing registration race in PA. There is a professor at the University of Pittsburgh named Laura. Putnam, and if you want to follow her tweets, she talks about since 2018, uh, the Republicans have uh, eaten Democrats for lunch as far as registering voters. So these 35,000 are very important. Um, we want, if we were not doing this, no one would be doing it. They are, I believe, one of the few, if not the only organizations dedicated to registering voters in Pennsylvania. That's their mission, that's their goal, that's what they do. So if it weren't for us, those names would just wander into the rolls whenever. The Republicans have ruled Pennsylvania, uh, except for, you know, the, thank goodness, um, Wolf as, as governor. So what would happen would be people who register would not be touched until GOTV. And by then it's pretty late to fix a register. And, and if they never got on the rolls because they forgot to enter something or entered it incorrectly, they, they would just never know that. 
and they end up not being voters. One of the great things about being able to register this information onto these spreadsheets is we see the voter registration forms. And if we see, for example, that there's no signature on the form, we can tell the voter, you need to go online and fix this so that you can vote. We can't go online for them, but we can help them go online and fix things themselves. That's awesome. And so this so new Pennsylvania project, is that the only group that you guys are working with now? How many other uh, projects are out there? Like, can there be a new Virginia project? How, how, how does this work? So. <laughs> oh, we're, that, that is our goal. We, um, Kadita Kenner, who is the CEO of New Pennsylvania Project, is ready to talk with anybody in Virginia uh, about how Virginia could do this. And uh, honestly, in 2023, if there is an organization like this, uh, Red to Blue would love to help replicate this model. We believe in the model um, and we're hopeful that we make the difference. We get so more people to have I I do have a question. How does, or, or do they tell you, how do you guys track your progress? Like, how do you look at it monthly and say, here's what our goal was for this month or today? How do you guys do that? That's good. Uh, we succeed if we have entered all the data and called every person one month after they've registered. So, yeah, Craig. That, get, that information gets entered by the phone caller on the spreadsheet. And then if that person has had trouble registering, is not registered, we can call that person back. So, um, so that's essentially how we're tracking ourselves. Um, we're inventing it all as we go along. So uh, there have been a lot of shifts in procedure, but every week uh, the process gets a little more solidified uh, and a little more rational. Very good, that's pretty awesome. So what else, what else should we know? Like for you guys, as you envision this getting bigger, as you envision a new Virginia project or whatever the next state, state is and you continue to grow, what have you found? What else are you doing that, that is uniquely red to blue that no one else is doing? or that you're doing better than you than most people are doing? Because there are some things you're definitely doing better. <laughs> I'm not sure that I would say that what we're doing is better. I'm saying this is a pilot project. To our knowledge, no one's done it before. At the end of the day, we're going to be able to see were new voters voting at a higher rate than one in three? That would be nice. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not have a formal uh, research component yet, but we're working on that. And um, I, I anecdotally, it feels like the right place to be. Um, I would add that this is one component of Red to Blue. We have a very sophisticated texting team that <clears throat> has helped um, uh, turn PA Blue with uh, their texting. We have uh, a big postcarding team, and we are always looking for um, places to, um, you know, to help out with postcarding. There's a big question right now as to whether we'll want to send postcards to newly registered voters. Um, there's a, a little bit of a debate going on within uh, NPP about whether postcards will be effective for uh, new registrants. Um, but Red to Blue really has a lot of different branches. So can we just chat for a minute about your texting and your postcarding teams? And because you got all of these really wonderful components that really support and help the other. Is there anything special about the folks who work on your texting and postcarding teams? Is, is everybody a volunteer in the organization? Yeah, everyone's a volunteer. Um, our texting team has a reputation for the quality assurance that they do. They have a tremendous amount of um, training and the culture is one of being kind. So we try to help people learn how to text. 
and we have a quality assurance group that makes sure that if some you, know, you get a hundred texts and then you get feedback and then you get two hundred texts and so it it um, it, it it's um, very much a um, high quality top of the line texting effort and our postcarders have been uh, working a lot with um, those projects that are research based. We just finished a large galvanized project where, um, so everything that we do, we try to make it uh, have a component of this should be effective because this is the research. And that's, the, so that's where it is. Um, I would add that um, in both of those uh, those arms, uh, we have we don't have enough work for our volunteers. People are hungry, hungry to do things to help out, which is a great feeling. When I started searching for people to enter data into spreadsheets, one of the most boring things I can think of to do, uh, people started crawling out of the walls. Really, let me help. Okay, that, that that that's just awesome. So yeah, I I I can find work for you right now, especially <laughs> the texting thing. So so we, we we can fix that. All all of this is solvable. This is all solvable. <laughs> so is there anything else that you want this group to know? Because I I'm I am so excited. I don't know how the Republicans keep beating us at registering, but we'll figure that out along the way. But but what else should we know other than we know we want to do a new Virginia project. So all the folks out there listening, we want a new Virginia project. So 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 we're we're putting down the gauntlet right now for that. And, and we we have the numbers. This is the way forward. Yes, yes. We we need to register, and then we need to get people to actually vote. That that is the future. I will say about our volunteers, um, we people come to our website and, and sign up through our website, we get about five a week. Um, after Roe v. Wade, um, I think we got 30 that week. Uh, this is the most important midterm that any of us has faced. And people know it, our people know it, and they are showing up. I don't know whether you're having the same experience in Virginia because you're, your the odd year election but for for pennsylvania it feels that people are i think we know it this is it well we'll yeah. have to figure out what we can do in uh you know in in less than four months but i think there's some stuff that we can probably do and uh, i think that you heard us talking about those billboards so so we got to work on that but i think that there is still plenty that we can do and i do think the texting effort is really important, but the registration, yeah, we could we could probably use some help. I do have other organizations that I hear are doing uh, registrations, but I don't know that they are doing it this way. Nor do I understand if they're having the kind of success that you guys are having. There are two things I would add. We did a lot of work pre-primary, and we added two components post-primary. One is we have a dedicated Spanish-speaking calling crew now. And the second is that every time we speak with somebody, we ask, would you like me to text you this information? Because it's the URL, it's the county registrar address and phone number. And every time we leave a message, we text that information too. For people who uh, are younger, they're, they're not picking up their phones, mm -hmm. but they are reading texts. And mm -hmm. for uh, people whose first language is not English, they now have a um, somebody in their lives can help them, de you know, read in the English. We send it in Spanish if it seems appropriate and someone asks for it. So, no, no, no keep going. No, I was just going to say that the the text is um, from your phone, and you sometimes okay. get a wonderful conversation back and forth with the voter. Awesome. That includes the URL for um, the voter registration site in Pennsylvania. All right, so I see that Catherine has joined I've us. So in. I know, I'm, I'm so impressed because I think that, and we've been talking about this, how important is registering voters? And I think 
last week I even said in Virginia how the Republican Party had done a lot of this mobilization and was around using churches, which was really interesting, right? But it's a great way to converse with people. So, so it's been a great conversation and I, I'm very excited to know what you guys are doing. And we hope just to bring all this information to people so you know we can emulate this stuff too in Virginia. So thank you so much, Craig and Isabel, for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you, Thanks. Isabel and Craig. We'll be in touch. Yeah, don't go away, as we say. Get that. It's time to get that Brooklyn bagel now. I love it. <laughs> Making myself hungry. Now that's great. And I and I, you know, we've been talking about this, and I see in the chat people understand it too, as registering voters. And, and how important that is to register voters because you can have such a good conversation when you talk to people on the phone about registering because how can I help you is the best thing. People are like, oh my gosh, you know. And I do love the opening line. Uh, we're the group that registered you to vote. And so now we've got an instant connection. So all of it matters. Words matter. Everything matters. Words matter. Everything matters. Well, good. But we're going to hear, I'm, I'm excited to bring up Ronnie Cohen now, co-founder and executive director of Activate America. Because, you know, she, I love Ronnie. Meeting her was awesome. Uh, good to see you because we're kind of sisters in a lot of ways. Our organizations, we got the start out of the Women's March in 2017. And I, I love reading about you, Ronnie, when you said this, you feel like this work is the most, one of the most important things happening in your life right now. Very much so. I, I come out of the environmental movement, actually, in our, in our organization. There are a lot of us that come out of the environmental movement. And, um, you know, we say to our volunteers, we care about such a wide range of issues. All of us care about, you know, gun safety and immigrant rights and the environment and, and, um, reproductive rights. We care about so many things, and yet there's no real way for us to make progress on any of those issues unless we elect the right people and help the Democrats maintain control of both houses of Congress. And I agree. And that's why, again, uh, bringing all these groups together, one thing, it, it helps us understand what everybody's doing and also learn from each other, which is cool. So tell us all about your founding. Give, give us the 411 to this room about how you got started I mean, you were formally flipped the West. Let's start there. Uh, how you, you know, got in this involved in this kind of work? Yes. So very much like your group and groups around the country, I think we were all so traumatized by the election in uh, in 2016. But for us, it was really the the sort of light bulb moment was at the Women's March and seeing all of these. Uh, you know, millions of people showing up around the country to to show their their passion and anger and frustration. And looking at those numbers, um, our organization was founded by campaign professionals. So the immediate reaction to those numbers was, if we could just channel all of this into electoral action, we could really make a difference. We would really have power. So we were actually founded as Flip the 14 because we were at that point all in California and we were targeting the 14 Republican held congressional seats in California. And a lot of people thought maybe we could flip one or two, but everyone knows the story there. Um, we helped flip seven seats, including in, in Orange County, which was a Republican stronghold and the Central Valley. So um, we, you know, we really wanted to put an immediate check on, the, on Donald Trump and taking back the house was, was that. And we were all very excited about that outcome. So that was flipped when we were flipped the 14, but then when we got to 2020, our, our, we expanded our focus and we said, okay, well now we have to take back the Senate. So we, we, that obviously was not something we were gonna do in California. So we became more regional and we, we expanded to Colorado and Arizona and Montana and Alaska. And, um, and, we, um, and we knew we needed to make even more voter contacts than we did when we were just in California. So we then, so we rebranded at that point as Flip the West and, uh, and instead of just recruiting individual volunteers, we began recruiting groups of volunteers. And I know you have some, some groups that have participated with right. us. Um, and then we were targeting additional Senate seats, eventually all the way to Georgia. So when we got to this cycle, we realized that we were no longer just regional, we were coast to coast, and we were no longer just uh, flipping seats, we were we needed to do a lot of defense. So we rebranded, hopefully for the last time, as uh, as as Activate. Activate America. But there's never a last time. You never know when we're what we 
also understand about this is working in the long game and really knowing that what loving talking to you, you understood that very well. Uh, and I think that's the way you saw, sort of can live this kind of lifestyle when you know you don't get disappointed by maybe one loss. This is really going to take a lot of time. So now that we kind of know, you know, how you got this start, tell us how you do it. What do you use is, you know, from the postcarding, how do you activate volunteers? Give it the genesis of what your group is good at then, what you use to do that. Um, so to give people the background of that. I will do that. And I also just want to shout out the folks in the chat who are noting that they worked with us um, as Flip the West. Uh, and I really, I'm, I'm thrilled. <laughs> nice to see you again. And um, yeah. so, uh, so as I said, we, you know, so we use, I think, a lot of the same techniques that a, a lot of the other individuals and groups on here do. Uh, we do texting, we do postcards, we do phone banking, uh, we do canvassing. We also have a regular series of webinars that give people more information on the electoral landscape in any given state. We, we have a post-primary uh, webinar coming up on August 11th, and we'll put that in the chat later if anyone wants to hear more details about you know, the way we see the electoral landscape. And um, we also have, uh, as I mentioned, we, we sort of, when we became Activate America, or actually when we became Flip the West, instead of just recruiting individuals, we recruited groups. So at that point, our group of groups was called the Flip Force, and now it's called the A-Team. Oh, and I like the A-Team. The A-Team, yeah. <laughs> of a certain generation, we get that. I have a feeling some people may not get the A-Team reference. But, um, but uh, so we have meetings once a month with all the group leaders, and we, we have trainings. Someone from Sister District is actually coming uh, this month to talk about right you know, why phone banking matters. We've had vote tripling presentations. And then we also talk about our current and upcoming programs and we, um, and we troubleshoot with groups. And then the group leaders can then take back what they learn at those meetings and share it with their groups because we do believe that the community aspect of this, of this work, right. of these actions right. really helps keep people involved. So by recruiting groups, um, people still have their local community, but we provide actions for them to plug into. So, you know, for, you know, Isabel was saying sometimes they don't even have enough work. Right. Groups, groups that don't have enough work in, in some of their other efforts can, can come to us and plug into our phone banks, which we have um, multiple times a week, or right. can plug into our postcarding programs. We have campaigns going in seven different states. No, I, and I love that part, like when you, when that was pretty cool that now organizations, they can really, basically, they want to work in Georgia on a certain race, they just plug in with you and you really help them use, you know, the tools or organize a fame, phone bank with them. I mean, how fantastic is that and easy? Yeah, we, yes, we, so we can, you know, if individuals want to show up Monday, Wednesday, right. Thursday, or Sunday, but right. if a group wants to just have their members in a Zoom, we can set up a separate entire phone bank for them. We can provide a trainer. We can train them to, you know, to lead it themselves. Right. We can make an own, their own Mobilize America listing. So it's private and just their members can sign up. We, we sort of have a plug and play model for groups. Yeah, that's cool. And what I was really also impressed with, we talked about how you prioritize, um, you know, your work and that is volunteers. And, and I think that's really the secret of, your, your organization when you talk about that, try to find that ladder of engagement. Talk about that, talk about why you feel like you are successful. Here you are still seven years later like us. Um, talk about that really priority that I feel like is key to your organization's success. I'm sorry, Kevin, I'm not sure I understand. Well, what... the volunteer engagement, how you treat volunteers, how you prioritize you know, finding their place and, you know, that volunteers feel that, you know, if they feel connected to, for instance, that, yeah, that they, really... they, yeah, they really do. I think the webinars are part of that because they see me like the way you are all seeing me now. Right. So it's very personal interaction. And so even though we have tens of thousands of volunteers, you know, I, I get emails where people say, you know, I'm moving this weekend, so I may not be able to make it, you know, to the to right. the the phone bank. So so we really do. I, I you know, we all get um, emails from our volunteers. We we always respond really quickly. You know, nothing gets kind of shunted into 
um, into a, an inbox somewhere. We will answer questions about the races if people have them, or uh, you know, sometimes people have feedback on a script, and we really, we really want to be responsive to our volunteers. We think of ourselves as basically a service organization. We're here to make this experience enjoyable and um, impactful for volunteers. Right, because like we we know that sometimes on these campaigns, they want to how they look at volunteers. We had a lot of kind of horror stories in the last election with some volunteers in certain campaigns were treated. They don't come back then. So what you want to do is make sure when you have these wonderful people that uh, like in this room that want to get in, into action, do something, they want that experience to be good. And I think like that's how that community is built and people do show up then for each other. You know, I think it's really important. Very much so. Yeah, no, no doubt. Well, very, very good. And so I want to know, you know, one thing we did ask so anybody in this room that's Virginia is we already talked about how, how we can get Virginia involved with you. Not this round because you won't be working in the in Virginia, but we can get involved with some of the races that some of the stuff you're doing in all the other important states. Is that correct? Yes, and I know that um, you know uh, other folks who spoke earlier were talking about the surge in volunteer interest around the Roe versus Wade decision, and we have a range of programming related to that. We have uh, pro-choice postcards going into um, most of our states. We have uh, pro-choice texting. We we did um, we did one uh, pro-choice text bank in Wisconsin. We'll have another one upcoming for North Carolina. And, uh, and we also have phone banks and, uh, and our scripts uh, for our postcards and our texting were developed in partnership with uh, Planned Parenthood. So um, they've done a lot of research about the most effective messaging to talk to voters about the, around this issue. And I would also like to say that basically in all of our target states, except for California, we work with, um, we're, we're a national partner with an organization called America Votes that uh, that coordinates independent expenditure activity in these states. So we're we're um, we're working with in-state partners. We have shared data, so any data we collect goes back into the the shared the shared database. Right. Where it it limits unnecessary or unwanted redundancy, and it also assures that our programs are um, are what the in-state partners want and need, both on messaging and targeting. No, that's awesome. So awesome. Well, thank you very much, Ronnie. Uh, it's My so pleasure. nice to meet you. Thank you for making time to come with us today. Um, and if you could stick around, please do so. And we want to just do a really quick segment before we bring up Nick from Demcast on the Women's Summit. Why not? I mean, we have been working hard on not only our Friday to Friday content to bring out there to our wonderful audience, and friends is also the Women's Summit. And we are heading to rural Virginia. And that is on August 12th and 13th. We will be at Waynesboro and then in Nellie's Ford at the Bull Rock Brewery. And it is all about getting together. And what Robin reminded me today on her big birthday was really the importance of that in person is not only about like say who's on the stage and maybe some of the workshops, but seeing each other, that energy, that synergy, that exchange of information is really important. So we hope you'll be able to come if you're in Virginia to get to the Rural Summit and we'll drop that uh, links in there about that and also about making sure that we are going to be doing these rural billboards uh, rural ground game will be talking more about that and we will tweet about it at the end of the segment later but how important it is to be funding and raising money for these candidates to put in their areas so people can get the message out on our values to make sure that we do mobilize for the midterms. And then in Tidewater, that is going to be September 16th and 17th for Elaine Luria. It's so much actions going on down there. I'm very excited about this. We have a room block over in Virginia Beach and, and Stair will be dropping the links in for that. And we already have the, the brewery for Friday night. They'll be playing Mama Mia at eight o'clock. And then we wanna get that dance and shoes on for Saturday because we'll have some great content in the morning, but we will be doing canvassing, canvassing, canvassing for Laura and getting our message out down there. And I want to uh, make sure for now, we're gonna be doing workshops for the this week also. We will have better meetings. And Manjula, I see you in the room today. Uh, I, she had asked for more stuff on leadership, better meetings for better results is going to be tomorrow at 9am. We'll put that link in there. And for special guests in this room today, you can sign up to be part of how to run a better meeting. 
And that's going to be really important. And Messaging Mondays, Fennell, what do you got to say about that? So Messaging Mondays have really been amazing. So, so far we've had two already. Last week we had you and the 34%, which was pretty awesome. And then the week before that we had Mira from Opal, which was also awesome on the three Vs. And so this Monday we're having Galvanize USA and it is all about messaging to white women. I'm just going to say they're 42% of the population. We know that we need to have the margins to win the selection. So Monday night, 7 p.m., join us for Galvanize USA with Jackie Payne. Yeah, and if you want to put that link in there. And Manjula, I see you out there. Uh, like I said, get into our all-in community. You want that link. Sign up for the meeting link because remember you said you wanted to learn more about leading grassroots, and I specifically found this wonderful wonderful facilitator and we need you in the room tomorrow morning so i hope to see you there all right let's get over to our next guest i see him nick from demcast is here uh nick could we bring you up sorry i gotta fix my screen so i could see everybody i think i'm up hey nick hello yeah knudsen i had a knudsen uh explanation. I have somebody in my house from Portland and we were talking. He said the Knutson name is a very popular name out there. It's, you know, it's all over the place, so to be, to be honest. The history, yeah. The founding, not, it's not a Portland thing. No, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a Danish, it's a Danish name. Oh, it's a Danish thing. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Well, well, good. Well, we're so glad to see you in the room and to making some time. I know you have a, a lot of excuse me, a lot going on, but we want to know, give people um, in the room a little background on Demcast, talking about that, you know, you have formed and this has been going on. Are you in your fourth, fifth year? Yeah, we founded in uh, August of 2019, so that we're coming up on three years. But really focusing on building this army of messengers and really taking over Twitter and, and really making sure that the, the information is coming you know, naturally from the grassroots and really trying to drown out this really negative right wing extreme um, information. So you've been very successful in that space and it's amazing to see how you've grown. And so today we really want to have you on talking about, you know, where you're going from here for this election, what you learned in 2020, 2021, and then your strategy in 2022 on um, really mobilizing for the midterms, where we got the name from, by the way, just so you know. You're welcome. Yeah, you're, <laughs> thank you. It's like, well, you guys are mobilizing for the midterms. Tell us about, tell us about what you're doing. But in the sense of that background too, like how you're using what you're learning, you know, each year to really focus, you know, your strategy. Yeah, we we've been learning a lot about um, on on multiple fronts. So yeah, the, there isn't um, you know, certain campaigns have tried to build a digital army. Um, but it's mainly focused around a candidate um, rather than the whole movement. And so I think we're, we're unique in that we're trying to build a sustained uh, digital army that can, that can share messaging and push candidates and um, drive the narrative online and uh, beat back the disinformation. So, um, you and know, you've been successful. Like, really, you have built this. We're so many people are involved. So good for you. I mean, really. Yeah. No, we've we've got tens of thousands of people who've signed up, and um, you know, our uh, our social media toolkits um, get get a ton of use on a daily basis, right. um, and uh, and our our online communities are very very active. Nice. So when you know you talked about some what you're how you're looking at 2022 now, um, knowing that you know that we sort of saw some underperformance in years past, and so how did you change your strategy? Like looking now at what you want to do when you're talking about. Tell us about what you mean by mobilizing for the midterms. Exactly what you plan to do. Um, so we are uh, going to be really really focused narratively on uh, on boosting candidates. Um, in, in the 2020 cycle, we had a, basically an adopt a state program, uh, called focus 14, um, where we, we had people adopt, a, you know, one of, one of 14 important states and, and focus on all the races within, um, within that state. This time we've divided up 
the work into three different categories um, that, that people can get involved with. So uh, first category is keep the house. Um, uh, second category is expand the Senate because we need at least two more seats yeah. to do all the things that we want to do. And then the last category is protect democracy, which is focused on um, governors, secretaries of state, and attorneys general um, that are in, in critical states where uh, GOP state legislatures are likely right. to try to overturn the election results in 2024. And those, those folks can be, a, can be a, a, you know, a, put a stop to that. So, uh, yeah, so, so we've, got, we've, we've, we're having people sign up for uh, one, two, or three of those categories, depending on how much time and capacity they feel they have. Uh, each of those categories has um, uh, a, a variety of candidates. In, you know, right. uh, half dozen in the in the Senate category to the to um, you know forty ish in the House category. And we're really, really narrowly focusing on the toss up races. Um, I think one of the things that we learned in the 2020 cycle, all of us, but Demcast as well, is that, um, boy, it sure would have been nice to get, you know, North Carolina and Maine, uh, win, win those Senate seats. Yes. <laughs> and, and maybe, maybe focus a little bit less on the ones that were, that were less likely, we were less likely, to, likely to get, um, you know, I think of like Amy McGrath, uh, where a lot of energy went into that race, and and certainly, yeah. certainly, a lot, of money. a lot of money and energy, a lot of money and a lot of energy and a lot of amplification, and uh, you know, she lost by a lot. So, so we're 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 really trying to focus in on the races that are going to be the tipping point races in yeah. in twenty twenty two. More super focused. And I think that's really important yeah. when we think about it. It doesn't mean you leave uh, any seat behind in a way, but it's just really focusing because we do have to have a strategy. And I, I totally agree with you. So what I'd like to do, if you have the link for people in mm -hmm. this room to get involved with you, and I know Heidi, if we can bring Heidi up, Dragneff of the, she's really important in the Virginia Twitter room and leads that. Um, and we, we can have a little experiment today, Heidi, what do you think we should do? Nick, I don't know, we haven't prepared you for this, but we have a billboard campaign and it's gonna be to help Elaine Luria and CD2. And we have a tweet prepared. And what we wanna do, Heidi, is Karen. get it out. Yeah, let's talk about it. Let's see if Nick will help us amplify that tweet out. I'm about to put it in the chat in real time so when we, we talk are i think robin said we're up a little over two thousand dollars raised since we started the call no no we we want to reach two thousand we're at one thousand eight hundred and thirty eight hundred so we, we want to cross close we're getting close very close so heidi yeah so what we're going to do is you guys are going to do your magic here um we're hoping Nick will help us amplify this. So we're raising money because this is, I don't know if you've heard everything before, mm -hmm. Nick, but we're really knowing that the, the actual candidates themselves, their campaigns will tell them, you're not doing billboards, but the grassroots, well, we could do what the hell we want. And we know they work and we're not, we're like, you know, we got to do everything and it really gets the message out and we need to raise money. And it's coming from our groups and we're gonna purchase those and they're gonna go down there. And so we want your help if you can help us amplify this tweet out there. How about totally. it? Are you Sounds game? Great. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, Let's super. That's easy enough. And then Heidi is Heidi, do you want to do a pitch for people to join you in the room? Um, yes, of course. We need more Virginia volunteers. It's it doesn't take much time. We just share tweets in our group chat on Twitter oh, and boost the candidates. And right now for Virginia, we're focused on Elaine Luria and Abigail Spamberger. So we just share the things that they've been doing. Um, one of the large things that I have found that has hit a lot of people, especially in our area, is what they've been doing for veterans. Abigail Spamberger and Elaine Luria have co-sponsored several bills that have passed the House with zero no votes so if you want to talk about bipartisanship that's a perfect platform 
Nice. Well, thank you. That's awesome, Heidi. Well, thank you, Nick. I, anything else uh, that we missed that you want to say? I think for we Democrats? missed one thing. Go ahead. Oh, I like, what do we miss? The Dem cats. The Dem cats. Oh, true. Nick, do yeah. you have his Dem cat available? Uh, this is something we do on Demcast almost every week. We have to see the kitties. So also, well, we have uh, Robin has her kitty up too. Oh, look at uh, the there, baby! Oh, there he is. Okay, awesome. So I uh, that is uh, what is the cat's name? This is Lulu. Lulu, and then oh. we have Phoebe. Robin, is that Phoebe? You're on mute, Robin. There is. Yeah, there she is. Okay, it's the cat, the dem cat. So if you want to be a dem cat, There's make sure that, there it is, the, all the little cats. And what's great is people should also know, Nick, if you can put anything in there, Heidi, about how to join the, the Monday calls at eight. That Monday call at eight is awesome. Everybody on this call, if you want to get into action, the, the dem cat sponsors this call. And it is something that I just, I love tuning into it. So Thank you, Dem Cats, for coming, and thank you, Nick. Any and, and did I miss anything? Um, I, I'll just say I. So I draw w one extra thing that we're doing this cycle that we do we didn't do last cycle is um, to to help people who may not be may be online, but maybe they're not in social media groups. Um, we are keeping a very active Mobilize for Midterms toolkit this cycle, uh, social media toolkit. It's going to be updated daily. Uh, we're, 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 we've got a group of people who are curating content from across the internet, news articles, social posts, and we're, and we're, we're dumping it into that toolkit so that people can go to that and just within a couple of clicks, share some relevant content about, about our, uh, our field of candidates. Ooh, all right. That's super. It's always good. And I, I dropped that link in the chat. Yeah, to have an entry point. And remember, we'll have this all in the re recap. So thank you, Nick. And we will uh, thank you also for being a partner in the Women's Summit. We'll be talking to you later. I know you're going to be on vacation. I'm down at the beach, so uh, I know you'll be away, but maybe uh, one of the team members can work with Finel on a messaging Monday to talk about that and how we can work those tweets and the social media on messaging. So thank you. Thank you, Nick. I'll let you go back to that the nice Portland time over there. And thank you, <laughs> Heidi, always yeah. my friend. All right, let's wrap it up. It is Friday, the end of Friday. Thank you to our wonderful guests. I mean, uh, we really have to keep highlighting how we're going to mobilize together. We have the wind at our back and we need to keep it at our back, keep the messaging going, keep it focused and not get distracted about anything. It's 187 minutes, my friend. And what we learned in those details should scare every one of us to death to fight like cats, really, to like cats to win this thing. So let's do some end of, end of uh, show stuff. We remember, you'll get the recap, so don't worry about a thing. It'll be sent to you in an email as long as you've registered. And don't forget, if you want to be a patron of the show, throw us a couple bucks. We love it. It helps us do our work, and it really feels good to build us up. And follow us on all our social media channels. And thank you to my wonderful, to the wonderful team, Robin Warner, birthday woman, show wizard, Stero Calhoun, ambassador of Buzz, Finel Norton, show messenger, Heidi Dragniff, social media diva. And thank you also to Laura Martinez, always showing up to help us in the Zoom, and Michelle McKinney, always bringing it and helping helping new members get adjusted to the chat and to the show. Thank you, uh, Michelle, for doing that. And to Julie Galdo and Sally Renholt for always helping up with our content. We really appreciate that. And we hope to see next week. We're working on a good show, so we'll keep, keep you tuned for that. Let's just go to, uh, let's go to credits and...